Good morning. Good morning, Amy. Hi, Black Diamond. Good morning. Good morning. Start to set up my stuff. So we did a poll, or I did a poll on my YouTube, asking what you guys wanted to see for this Sunday. And I think, was it by far that that one? The uh, poll? It didn't, not by far. It was close tied to, oh. uh, to new makeup. Or, yeah, new releases. Okay, so we did a poll and um, going into the office makeup won. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I'm excited for this because I actually get requests for this all the time. And I think that it's such a simple idea, it's such a simple concept, but I think there's still some people that might struggle with it. So this should be helpful. But I do wanna say like, this is just gonna be like a guide. So I think take what you will from it, but ultimately, what I want to say before this is, you know, who am I to say what's work appropriate makeup wise? Do you, and you know your work environment more than I do obviously, or anyone else. So if you, you know, you know your work environment, let's say you work in like a creative industry, then you're going into the office makeup look probably is gonna look different than someone who's working a corporate nine to five. So this is actually gonna be geared more towards like the corporate nine to five or like, you know, it just may be a little bit different what you see like dress wise and um, makeup wise. So also it's going to be geared towards people who wear glasses. So I wear glasses when I do makeup now and <laughs> you're broke because of me. Oh my God, that's so funny. I'm so sorry, but I, at least I know that you have some great makeup now. <laughs> so that's awesome. Hi, Nancy. So let me clean, clean my glasses. Um, so I do get a lot of requests for makeup looks for glass wearers, like eye glass wearers. So I thought I would combine the two. And I think there's two ways you can go about this. You could either focus on your eyes and making them shine through, like through your glasses, which is actually pretty difficult because let's face it, your glasses, depending on like where they sit on your face can take up a lot of your eye space. So I always just say like a general rule of thumb is to focus on your lashes, get some definition in your crease, do a little bit of shading and then you're good. But for, yeah, it's like just simple. Cause you're not gonna see, if you do like a really detailed eye makeup look, the thing is, the reality is you're not gonna see it. And that's just like the sad, honest truth. We got hi from India, hello from California. Um, so that's, just, that's the sad, honest truth. You're not gonna see, if you did like some gorgeous, intricate carved crease and all those things, you're just not gonna see it. So I think that for a lot of people, I think a great option if you wear glasses and you also go into the office, a great option is to focus more on your lips. So, long story short, that's what we're going to do. Hi from Sweden. So I also got messages on my Instagram. Um, I think it was just on my Instagram to use the new Naturium sunblock. So I'm gonna incorporate that into this live as well. So I'm gonna shake it because it's a liquid. Hold please. Yeah, Alex, it's a lip focus look. And the lip I have for you all is just like top notch stunning. So I'm really excited for it. And it's, I think probably one of, I think it's gonna be like a really universally flattering lip shade. So very, very excited for it. But let me get the sunscreen on. It's very watery. It's very like liquidy. <laughs> I'm putting this on top of two other serums that I have on. One is from the brand Mother Science. They're newer. And I was reading about them as a brand and like who they are because they sent me in, they sent me their products in PR and I just didn't know, like I'd never heard of them. And I looked them up and I saw that they, it was created by a husband and wife duo, but the husband's in the band Incubus. So that was crazy. I know. Yeah. What? Wild, right? Wow. That's awesome. So let me talk about the sunscreen really quick. I think this is, no matter what, even if you're going into the office, I think there's a huge misconception with people that go into the office that they think, I don't need to wear a sunscreen, I'm inside. But there's natural light that comes through. And also I think a big, big thing to remember is when you're commuting, like let's say you're commuting into the office and you have any kind of drive time, even if it's like 10 minutes, hi cat lover girl you have to wear sunscreen because the sun's gonna get, first of all, the sun gets your face when you're in the car. It gets you, um, 
I miss you, I'm peace mom. Oh, hi Nancy. Oh, Nancy, okay, I know who you are, Nancy. The sun's gonna get you, and it's gonna get you in the office too. So I think it's just a good rule of thumb, put sunscreen on to protect your skin. But the other thing I would suggest too, if you're in the office, right? Like if you are working a nine to five and you're in the office all day, generally speaking, I would imagine you don't have much time to touch up your makeup. So you wanna make sure that the makeup that you put on stays looking nice and polished throughout the day and not like midway, like halfway through the day or halfway through lunch, you look like you're just, you know, your skin's getting really shiny, your makeup's starting to settle and crease and like fall apart in a sense. So I think this is a good time to utilize a primer. So this one's from Fenty and it's the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. I actually really like this primer. I don't use it enough. I put this on top of, hi Adrian, hi Adrian's daughters. So cute that you guys watch together. I love that so much. So I'm gonna focus this on, my God, 5.40 in the morning. I know. Well, happy Monday to you. Mm -hmm. This is perfect for you. If you're going into the office, this is perfect. I'm gonna focus this pretty much all over my face, just to be honest. This one's the kind of fil uh, primer that doesn't feel like thick and filmy. But, you know, if you know me, I really can't stand that feeling with primers. So this one feels nice to be all over your skin. So just applying it all over. I'm going to wipe my hands a little bit. What Andrea. Okay. And don't worry, everything, if you miss anything, it'll all be listed below. But I have my sunscreen on and I just finished with primer in case you missed it. So let's talk about like different foundation products that you could use that are gonna be really easy. Instead of like talking about the obvious, which is just a foundation, tinted moisturizer is a really good one, a good, great option to like put on and just give you like a nice natural, even amount of coverage. But you would definitely wanna use something like this with a primer and you'd wanna make sure you set it so it just stays put and doesn't look like it's slipping on your face like halfway throughout the day. Cause like if you're in meetings and you're like actually in the office, you want the makeup that you do wear to look good the entire time. Cause otherwise what's the point? You know what I mean? And then another good option too, which I actually really want to use this cause I haven't used this in a while. It's the Makeup Forever uh, HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder. It's a buildable powder, buildable coverage powder foundation. It, set, it says it's 24 hour. I hate claims like that cause you would never want to wear your makeup for more than you know, 10, 12 hours max. You know what I mean? Cause then it's just like, like why would you want to do that to your skin? So I think I'm going to do this because this is kind of obvious. So let's, let's just switch it up totally and do a powder foundation. And this is going to lay really nice on top of the sunscreen and on top of the primer. So instead of putting it on with the sponge, which it comes with, which is okay for like touch-ups. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Clearly use this. Forgot about that. But you know, this is just gonna deposit way too much product and it's gonna be just really, really heavy. So unless you need all that coverage, I would do a brush instead. So I'm gonna use a clean 106 from BK Beauty. And I'm gonna dip in. Let me actually show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna dip into it like this and, and I'm gonna tap off a little bit of the excess and start a little more in the center of my face. Don't worry, Shania, if you miss it, I promise you it's all gonna be listed. Everything will be listed. Oh my God, Alicia, thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate you so much. And I'm so happy you made it to a live. Jeez. So yeah, Stephanie, the 106 is a game changer. So this is gonna look a little funny at first because, you know, I'm not gonna go into detail again because I do it all the time, but my face is at least three shades lighter than the rest of my body. So this is gonna make me nice and even and cohesive. So I'm really just getting it on there and I'm just dipping a little bit into this powder. I'm, I'm doing a really thin layer, just enough to give me a nice even complexion, but not a heavy complexion. But the fact that I have that hydration, like the the serums underneath and I have the sunscreen and then I have the primer. It's gonna make this powder foundation lay and look nice and like flawless and like skin and not like a heavy, dull powder foundation. 
bundle. Oh my God, you're getting the bundle on Tuesday? I'm so excited for you to get the bundle. Actually, I am gonna utilize the eyeshadow palette for this look because it's got some really simple tones, like neutral everyday tones in it that are perfect for a work look. So just you wait. Nikki, I'm not a makeup really. Oh wait, what was the question? Um, the last one? Sorry, I'm gonna try to read that. Right, Mitch is gonna read it for me. Kind of going to makeup school, is that what you're talking about? No, I think it was. Nikki, oh, not makeup related, but you become so successful and it's amazing. What advice do you have someone struggling to trust the process at all? Oh, you just gotta trust the process. That's the thing. Like, you have to trust the process and believe in yourself that you can like get through the hard times of, I'm assuming you're a makeup artist. Um, Oh, Mitch just say yes to everything. <laughs> That's really great advice. If you're starting out, say yes to everything within reason, I say. Within reason. Know your worth too, okay? But try not to turn down what could be great opportunities. Mitch is laughing at me. They can't plan to go to makeup school. What's your advice on being a makeup artist? I'm still very confused. Well, what are you what are you struggling with the most? What's like your biggest question? Like what's, what's scaring you the most or what do you just, what do you feel like you need the most help with? Guys, this is looking really nice. Just a side note, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really nice. My skin feels good. I still feel like I have, I actually feel like I have like a liquid foundation on, but again, that's because of the skin prep that I did underneath. Is it dark? No. No? Okay, I'm gonna actually bring you guys closer for a second. I'm sorry, just a little bit, sorry. Sorry, don't get motion sickness, everyone. Oh. I'm so sorry about that. Sorry. Stick. Is that better? I just feel like I was far away from you. Okay. Much better. Much better. Much better? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mitch's is better. So much better. Great. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Mitch is the most supportive. Okay. So once I get this in a good place, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I feel like I just need a little bit more right here. And then I'm gonna show you how you could put concealer on top of powder. Could be really tricky. Anyway, you can share more fashion content. Nora, I, I love that idea. I think for sure at some point, I'm definitely gonna start sharing more, like just, just like little fun fashion content. Let me grab my color card. So I'm gonna color correct under my eyes before I do concealer, so that, that way I can use less concealer. I'm gonna use my Bobbi Brown Light Peach, and I just use my fingertip. This is a great, great product, especially for like going into the office because you wanna kinda of like simplify your whole makeup look, right? And like just take a look in the mirror and think, okay, what do I need? What do I need to like make myself just feel more confident, right? Like when you're talking to people and stuff, like what are your insecurities? What are things that bother you? And then focus on those things and getting those things to a place where you feel good about them. And then from there, creating like something fun, like focusing on your lip or focusing on your blush or your eye, if that makes sense. So it's not about like being, you know, I, I hate the saying, but like beat to the gods. Like you don't really want that for going into the office unless that's your office dynamic. I don't know what your office dynamic is, but um, you want to just keep it simple, basically. Oh my God. Janine Thomas. Hmm? What? Oh, what? Geez. Oh my God. Thank you. Good Lord. Would you please message me so I can send you a thank you? Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That is stunning. Shocking. Wow. I'm sending you a huge hug right now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy that you are loving the tips and hopefully they're actually like really helpful to you because that's the whole point of what we do. Okay. Janine, please send me a message so I can thank you. And now I'm going to put a little bit more concealer on top. I'm going to try this for the first time, which is a little bit of a gamble because I don't know how it's going to look with this powder, but we're gonna try out together. But ultimately just use whatever concealer is gonna give you a nice amount of coverage, but also like a semi little bit of brightening under your eye to give you that like well-rested, 
I'm not tired looking at the office kind of look. So this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spots Concealer Plus Serum. It's promising a lot of stuff, okay? It's got like 2% niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, caffeine, buildable, buildable coverage, natural finish. This is a lot of claims. Like this is where it gets confusing, I think, for like a consumer. You don't have to have like 20 million claims on a concealer. If you just take care of your skin underneath, you don't need to worry about having niacinamide in your concealer. This is my opinion. Might be unpopular. Let me try to open this. Sorry. Okay, so it actually has like a little brush tip on the cap. I'm not going to use that. Shocker. Okay, one thing I don't like about this too is it's rounded on the bottom. So I can't set it down. You know what I mean? Like I'm just gonna have to hope that nothing drips out when I lay it on my table. I'm gonna take the doe foot, pop it right here. As Mitch sneezes. Excuse me. And I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna really focus this just where I need it. So just where I need enough coverage um, which is right here in the center of my eye, like the inner corner of my eye. This is where I have the darkest, and this is where most people have the most darkness under their eye. Like we have shadows in here. This is usually where we have like broken capillaries. We have darker pigmentation under our eyes. And this is where you want to focus your concealer if you're going for a natural in-office look. But I'm also gonna give my eyes, I'm gonna do them a favor, I should say, and I'm gonna give them a lift up. So if you angle your concealer upward like this, it's very subtle, but it's gonna create this really soft, natural, lifted eye effect. So this is why I say you should get a color that's just a little bit lighter than your skin. Hi, May. Because it's gonna give you that little bit of a natural, like brightened effect in that area. So now before this dries down too quick, you have to be careful because you know, this is on top of somewhat powdered skin. So I'm gonna take a blending brush. It's an A503 from BK Beauty. I'm gonna start by tapping it in. That way I keep that coverage because that's what I want. And for in the office, you don't wanna go overboard with a concealer because think about like how much talking you do throughout the day and like how much animation you probably would show while you're in the office and you're, let's say you're presenting or you're in a meeting the more concealer you have under your eyes, if it's not properly set, you're gonna have creases. So keep it a little more minimal if you can, like if your complexion or just your mood allows, like let's say you like a heavy concealer and that's like your your um, insecurity point is your under eyes, then do you, like do what you need. But if you can, use a little less concealer because you don't wanna walk around with creased concealer at the office people are seeing you in person. So it's something you just have to really think about. All your interactions, I would assume, are gonna be either Zoom or in person. Oh, thank you, Shania, that was so sweet. Wait, was it Shania or was it Shania? I think it's Shania. I think I just said your name wrong. Please tell me. I think it's Shania. Shania, please let me know if I said your name correctly. Okay, so blending that concealer upward. Oh, you're so sweet. Honestly, it's my favorite part of my Sunday too. And because from here, it goes by so quick. Okay, like Shania Twain, Twain. okay, few, few. Okay, I wasn't sure, just wanna make sure. Now I'll definitely remember because I like Shania Twain. Mm -hmm. So now with whatever's left over, this is a really good trick to utilize. You don't want to go heavy. You don't need to go heavy unless unless you do need to go heavy. Try to keep it light on your eyelids as well. So I'm just going to run whatever's left over of that concealer that's on my brush. I'm going to run it over my eyelid. And this is going to give me a nice, just a natural amount of coverage on my eyes. And that's all you need, right? So now from here, what you do want to do is before you go in with um, like your eyeshadows, Unless you have very oily eyelids, just take a little bit of loose powder. This is the um, translucent powder from Laura Mercier. And 
set your whole eyelid. It's gonna be nice, natural. It's not gonna look really makeup y in person. And just run all along your eyelid. And then you're done. You have a nice simple eye base. It's not gonna be too heavy. It's not gonna look heavy. It's not gonna feel too much throughout the day. And now we can do a just a simple eye makeup look. It's gonna be very, very simple because like I said, I'm choosing for like this in office inspired makeup look to focus on the lips for eyeglass wear. So just keep that in mind. So I can actually use the same brush, it's just the same BK Beauty brush. I'm gonna grab the Essential palette from Galactic. This is still in my bundle, my bundle is still available. And I'm gonna dip into Skin. So Skin is like this beautiful mid-tone brown. Anybody could wear it. It's just gonna be a perfect daily color that you could pop in your crease. It's gonna give your eyes like that just perfect amount of definition without looking like you have a whole eye makeup look on. So I'm gonna just blend this into the crease. And it's gonna go nice and smooth and just effortless because I already have that powder on my eyelid. So it's not gonna like skip or get patchy on top of wet eyelids. Gosh. Okay. What do you think about double eyelid tape? Oof, um, I wouldn't use it personally, I think, but I know a lot of people do use that if they have um, hooded eyes. I just think, you know, I don't know. I'm not into the whole face tape in any any direction. I, I Face tapes are like a really big trend. I don't know if you guys remember. I'm sure it is still a trend. I, I definitely still see like really dramatic makeup artists using the tape that connects to your temples and then you pull it back and it gives you this look. It like snatches your eye. Hey, which looks great. Like, love it. Wish I could walk around like that. But I would never alter someone's physical appearance in that crazy of a way. Sorry, I'm just not a fan. So I don't like any kind of tape situation. Be you, enhance your natural beauty. I think that's just always the best way to go. But to each their own, if you wanna use it, no judgment. I just don't use it on clients. Okay, so blending this also into my crease on this eye. Just doing a soft, <laughs> what a scam. Um, just doing a soft wash of it, really keeping it simple because we're going into the office, in theory. I love the fact that the since I started washing it, which was only a month ago, and I spent thousands of dollars. Oh my God, who spent thousands of dollars? Uh, uh, oh yeah. Dip into a little bit more. Oh my gosh, you, so you, somebody was just commenting they just started following me a month ago and they spent thousands of dollars. I mean, I'm happy for you. I mean, I like, like I said, like you probably have an incredible makeup collection and you're probably loving it. So, and if you can, if you can afford it, live it up, man. I, I'm happy for you. That's amazing. And also thank you so much for following me. I'm so happy that you've been inspired to buy makeup and play with it. That's awesome. Okay, so just almost done with this. Oh my God, Chrissy Lee, thank you so much. Thank you for thank you and thank you for the inspo to do my folk my lip focused. I'm just gonna reread that for you. So much for me. Thank you for the inspo to do a lip fo focused look for my 40th birthday on Wednesday. Oh. You're so talented and I appreciate you teaching all of us. Oh my god, your birthday's on Wednesday? Well happy or was it Wednesday? Either way, happy birthday, happy 40th. That's such an awesome milestone. Congrats and that's so cool you did a lip focus. I would love to see your makeup. If you send me a picture, I would love to see it. I love, love seeing like makeup looks that are inspired by things that I've done. It's just, it's so much fun to me. Okay, back to our office makeup look. Let me grab a nice, simple eyeliner. This is one of my favorites for like a daytime look, just a natural look, depending on what your skin tone is. Um, if you're deeper skin tone than me, you want to go for a deeper tone. But for my skin tone or anyone lighter, this is a really nice natural daytime look or daytime shade, I should say. It's the NYX Epic Smoke Liner. It's the shade Nude Haze. And Nude Haze actually has like a funny little smudger brush that I never use on it. But this is Nude Haze and it's just like a nice 
natural brown. So great pencil, long wearing. I'm gonna set it with some powder from that same eyeshadow palette just so it locks it in. You don't have to worry about it running or transferring. But even on its own, it's a pretty decent wear time. So I'm gonna take it, let me grab a mirror because I don't have one. I don't like get out of frame. Okay, so I'm gonna just run this as close and tight to my lash line as possible. We're not gonna do a wing, even though you know it's gonna be hard for me to stop myself. Instead, we're gonna do a very simple, very tight and very clean, you know, just office eyeliner basically. So, and it's enough eyeliner to bring out your eyes and to define them, especially underneath glasses, but it's not so much where it's like overboard for a nine to five. So it's somewhere nice, it's like a nice middle ground. But either way, I'm gonna taper it. I'm not gonna do a wing, but I am gonna taper it so it's thicker in the outer corner because that's just a flattering, more flattering way to wear your eyeliner. And as I get into this tighter inner corner, I'm going to run it on the inside, but also keep it very, very thin. So it's gonna be a nice tapered effect, which is very, very flattering for anyone's eye shape. So that's the eyeliner, and then we're gonna set it in a second. I'm sorry if I'm missing questions. Okay. I think you very really like your recent video on the one that I shows. I was saying that the Sephora collection of eyeshadow sticks are great too. Mm. The one size and rare beauty liquid eyeshadows are also. I know there's so many. When I did that, when we filmed that video for one and done eyeshadows, I started realizing, man, there's just so many good ones out there. I could have made that video like like probably four hours long, honestly. There's just, there's so many, but I think it was just fun to just film the ones that I, I love and I've used for honestly years, except for that Sephora brand one. That was a new pickup of mine and I love it. But yeah, I agree. There's just, there's so many good ones out there. Sammy, Maybe we'll do a part two, sorry. Sammy asks, uh, can you recommend an eyeliner to tightline, dark brown or black? Lately I've been having severe dryness and burning when I tightline. Ooh, it might be the formula that you're using that's giving you an allergic reaction. Um, yeah, you might be sensitive to something that's in it. I'm not sure what, which formula you're using, but you would definitely want to switch it up if you're getting that kind of burning sensation. Um, I love so many, to be quite honest. I love the ones from NARS. They're really long wearing. They glide on really easy, so you don't have to like tug and do all that stuff and irritate your eyes beforehand. They just glide on like... Like butter. I use them on my clients all the time, my kit. And some other ones that I love too are the ones from Persona. These are great. Persona Cosmetics has some really great, very long wearing pencil eyeliners. You sharpen them. And that's one thing too you might want to think about too. Make sure your pencils are clean and sharpened, like well sharpened. Get any old bacteria or any dust that might have somehow gone in or on top of them off and go from there. Oh, Chrissy. Wow, you have one more question. Okay. Just want to answer. Oh wait, no, that was the same question. Okay, we asked that. We answered that, right? Just, just wanted to answer your question that my birthday is coming up Wednesday. Oh, your birthday is coming up when? Okay, well. Who asked the advice on starting a channel? Oh. Happy almost birthday, Chrissy. She's the one that. Um, oh. Asked her advice, yeah. Oh my God! So your birthday's on Wednesday. Well, have you, Chrissy? Have you thought more about YouTube and getting into it? I'm gonna dip into bark. It's like a really dark, dark brown and a little bit of spice. And Chrissy, if you need any more advice on YouTube, just, you know, you know where to find me. Let me know. So the reason why I'm grabbing this now, like these two dark shadows, I mix my brush into both colors to kind of blend the two and make them a little bit softer. So now I'm gonna use this to lock in that brown and just lock into place, set it. So that way, if you're at work, you don't have to worry about it, it's done. It's like. It's locked in and you don't have to worry about it running or transferring. This is a, a must. I think if you have a long day ahead, you have to set your eyeliner, especially if it's pencil. Oh, there's a fly in my house. Yeah. It just ran by my head. So that's locking it in. Inevitably, it's gonna deepen it a little bit because I dipped into a darker shadow. 
Okay, so uh, Rachel says, Rachel Brown says, I had a pronounced Cupid bow and never thought I could try a look without. When I tried it, it the other day, it was terrible. Can you describe how you do it today for us makeup challenge? So like filming with Cupid's bow. Um, this is Rachel. Uh, yeah, Rachel Brown. Okay. Rachel, for filling in your Cupid's bow, do you want it defined or did you want it to, are you trying to alter it in some way? Well, stay tuned because we will get to that and it will be, I'll, I'll make sure I slow it down and I explain how I like to personally fill in my cupid's bow and how I like to line my lips. And lip liner, I want to say too, is just, it's so personal. Like it's a, it just so, per, all makeup is personal, let's be real. But lip liner, I feel like is especially personal. And I learned that when I first started doing makeup, I had an eyelash on my cheek because I had a couple clients way back in the beginning that would insist on doing their own lip liner. And because they like their lips, they like to see them a certain way, like a very particular way. And I get it now, I totally understand the uh, the reason for that because lip liner is just really personal. Okay. okay um, oh. I got a couple things for you. Can you explain the purpose of using toner and skin cleansing and moisturizing routine? Can you explain the purpose of using toner and skin cleansing and moisturizing routine? Yeah, there you go. Who asked that? Uh, that was I'm gonna do a little bit of quanting. Who was it? Joanne. Joanne, um, okay, so Joanne had a question. Can I explain the purpose of toner, moisturizer, cleansing? It's basic skincare. You have to take care of your skin. Your makeup is only gonna look as good as the skin that you have underneath, if that makes sense. So if you have dry skin, if you have uh, uncleansed skin, your makeup is just gonna suffer really, really bad. So I, I guess this is a hard question because it's hard for me not to understand why you don't understand why it's important. Not to sound mean or anything like that, I just, if you're not using a skincare routine, I just couldn't recommend getting on one ASAP. Just get on one ASAP. You need to take care of your skin just like you. You eat, you drink water, you take care of your body, you need to take care of your skin so your makeup looks good on top. Georgina says, is it, is it advisable to wear smoky eyes to a school drop off? <laughs> Probably not, but you know, who am I to say? Like I said, like, like I said in the beginning, you know, who am I to say what you, what's appropriate for you to wear to work and what's not. I can only just give you like general advice and general tips on what I think would look great and is kind of just a, a safe bet is what I should say, you know? But ultimately, you know, you do you. I'm not the authority of what to wear to work, but I can tell you some helpful advice on what I think is gonna look timeless, classic. So what right now, in case you missed it, Sorry, I didn't really mention it, but I'm just warming up my complexion and giving myself like a little bit more warmth throughout. I'm not really trying to contour. I don't think the office is the place where like extreme contour and like sharp chiseled cheeks and like a really extreme nose contour. I think it's just keep it soft, just warm up your complexion. So you look like just, you know, just bring some life back to your complexion. You never wanna go into the office with just a flat base on. And that Makeup Forever powder, that's all I had on with concealer. So my skin, there was no dimension, it was just flat. So bring some dimension and some warmth back to your complexion and um, it'll just make your makeup come to life. So now I am gonna take a little bit of that Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer. I wear the shade three. Is it three? No, I'm sorry, I lied, it's two. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna work this a little bit on my nose just for a little natural contour, nothing crazy, just Keeping it simple. I have not tried the girl on anything except for, I think I've tried the bronzer once. And I know I'm pronouncing that name wrong, but I need to get more into it and try more of their products because I heard they're amazing. How do you disinfect your products for clients' makeup? I heard that many makeup artists spray rubbing alcohol and eyeshadow palettes to disinfect them. Yeah, you could do alcohol, like a high percentage alcohol. I keep everything in my kit, but I use this one from, it's from this brand called So Clean. And they specialize in, they specialize in, um, sorry, I was reading that comment about horror movies. <laughs> they specialize in 
disinfecting sprays that you spray on top of powders, your uh, cream products, all makeup, uh, lipsticks, all those things. And it's a way to disinfect the makeup without damaging the actual product and the integrity of the formula. So that's what I use in between my clients to disinfect products. Beauty So Clean, thank you. I knew I was getting the name wrong. Okay, so that is on, that is all good. I wanted to show you one more product that I'm obsessed with and I wasn't going to put anything on the bottom lash line for this look other than like a little bit of powder eyeshadow from my Galactic palette, but this is a new product I got in PR recently and I tried it yesterday and I couldn't stop looking at the mirror. It looks so beautiful. It's from Laura Geller. I haven't used Laura Geller in, Geller in like 10 years minimum. It's been forever, but it's the Kajal Longwear Eyeliner. It's basically like a shadow stick. It's like a thick shadow stick and it's in the shade Rose Gold Coal. This is so beautiful. So I have to show you, but first, actually I lied. I have to set my under eyes properly. I didn't properly set them yet. Babe, do you like horror films? Yes, I love, I, yes, I like horror films. Um, and I finally got Mitch into watching them. It only took me like six years. I'm not really into that anymore. He's not really into them, but he like gets like the fun of them, I guess. I won't watch anything crazy like Saw, you know, like I'm not into that, but I like the classics like Halloween and um, there's so many. I won't get into detail, but. Okay, setting my under eyes and locking that concealer into place. This is honestly one of my favorite powders for setting under eyes. I forget how good this, the old school translucent formula from Laura Mercier, not the new one, but the old school one. I forget how amazing this powder is. It really is phenomenal. And every time I go back to it, I'm like, why do I stop using this? Like, why? It's so good. This prevents your eye makeup and your shadow or your concealer, excuse me, from creasing. If you properly set your under eye concealer, you won't have to worry about, Nightmare Nails is a great one. You won't worry about, you won't have to worry about your eyeshadow, your, I keep saying eyeshadow, your concealer creasing throughout the day. So especially if you're an eyeglass wearer and your eyes, your glasses sit right here, they rest here. Set your makeup so it doesn't move it and slip inside and create too many crazy creases throughout the day. It's still gonna crease it to some extent, but it's gonna help a lot. Alicia asked, how do you clean your makeup brushes during the video? Alicia, I actually have a whole video on how I clean my makeup brushes, like my professional makeup brushes. It's on my YouTube. It's probably well over a year old. So if you scroll down a bit, you'll, you'll run into it and find it. So for anyone at home that's wondering like why am I setting a powder foundation, it's just gonna lock it in even more. And I just use like a really small amount, like a very, very tiny bit, just to press down even more and to lock it into place. Hmm. Okay, base is looking good. My base feels really good. Now I can go back to that Laura Geller pencil because you guys are gonna love how pretty this is on. So I think this is a really beautiful, um, I think this is a really beautiful shade because it's a nice neutral mid-tone brown. So very work appropriate, not too much. It's not gonna look too heavy. But if you're an eyeglass wearer, this has a little bit of sparkle in it. So when you're wearing your glasses, you really see the most right here. Like you don't see up top so much, you see mostly down here. So this is gonna be a fantastic way to bring out your eyes in a natural way. So I'm gonna run this on the bottom lash line. Hopefully it shows up on camera. I know it's not the same as in person. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, Jean says, great question about the expired out. Do you throw away your eye palettes after they've expired? Um, well, in my makeup kit, yes. So be. My personal ones, I'm a makeup porter and I like to keep all my powder eyeshadows as like inspiration and just to have them. So no, I don't throw out my personal ones. I stop using them, but I don't do? throw them out. No, I don't throw them out. No, I'm saying, do you stop using them, really? Yeah, I oh. mean, after, after so long, you have to get rid of them. Why is that? Are they moldy or something? No, just they build up bacteria and dust and things, but you have to keep them clean. If you keep them clean, you know, powders have an ex exceptionally long shelf life. They're not like liquids. They're not like creams. Those go bad 
those have an expiration date. This is an unpopular opinion, but powder eyeshadows, they have so much more like leeway to, to keep and hold on to for a long time. So if you keep them clean, you keep them closed up, you keep dust and dirt out of them, don't dip dirty brushes in back and forth because that's gonna just make them disgusting anyway. If you keep them clean, they have a, a superior shelf life than any other products do for makeup. You need your 20 year old palettes. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I have one of the first palettes I ever bought from uh, BH Cosmetics back when I first started doing makeup. And I, keep, I kept it, not because it's ever gonna touch my face, but for memories. <laughs> Sounds silly, but it's like, I don't know. I'm like a makeup, I have a makeup museum in the garage, okay? So I just, I'm a little different. I'm gonna curl my lashes. This is so important, I think, if you're going to the office, curl your lashes. I, I'm a, assuming you're not gonna do lash strips or individuals, because that's probably just gonna be a little too much and also very time consuming. So curl your lashes, get the most out of your lashes and get them to look the best they can, especially if you're wearing glasses. So I'm gonna curl these guys. Justin says, I had, I had House Labs foundation on today. It was so good. I oh, love nice. it so much and definitely get one. You love it too. Oh my God. I'm so happy you love the House Labs. As I sit here and poke myself. The House Labs is just one of my favorites. It's phenomenal. Okay, so I'm going to go one more round just to make sure I got all these guys. Oh my God. Hi from India. Hello, back. I want to go. Can we get a tour of your makeup? <clears throat> yeah, we should. Tour of your makeup museum in the garage. I know, right? Well, I'll have to organize it a little bit more first because it's a little chaotic at the moment. Okay, so for mascara, I'm going to use the Girlactic Lash Play Mascara. This is in my bundle. And this is just a great daily mascara. So I'm going to use the lengthening side first, which is this side. And I'm going to use a detailing side on the bottom lash line, which is foolproof because it's not like a super big wand where it gets messy and you run the risk of just ruining your bottom lash line. I'll show you in a second if you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I've learned so much from you and watched your videos, but all the products and follow your tips. I have so many compliments on my skin and makeup. Love That's you. amazing, Dahlia. Dahlia. Dahlia? Dahlia. Oh, Thalia. Sorry. I thought Mitch said Dahlia. Can you do a video where you share your makeup museum with us? I know it would take a lot of time, but we would love to see it. Absolutely. We'll add it to the list. I mean, it'll be like, it'll be literally like a five hour it'll, Yeah, video. Mitch is like, it'll be like a five hour long video. <laughs> That'd be fun though. Mm -hmm. What eyeliner should I use when my eye... When my inner area of my eyes creases or cracks, my eyes are wide set. Thanks, love you. Honestly, unless you're gonna do like a liquid liner that's just budge proof, if you're prone to creasing and I think you said cracking and stuff in the inner corner, I would just avoid the inner corner or just run a small amount of dark eyeshadow with an angle brush right here and just do like a soft little definition and then call it good. Justin, yes. Mm, Would you ever consider doing a male makeup look on a male model? If you need one, I'm a dancer based in LA. Justin, DM. DM. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I got two, two, um, two letters, DM. <laughs> no, I, yes, a hundred percent. And I'm still trying to get one done. I am gonna. I was gonna use Mitch for my first model, <laughs> but um, I have an agent too. Wow, Justin, look at you. It's freaking awesome. But if he, if Mitch changes his mind and he's not up for being on camera, you better believe I'm gonna call you up. I'm gonna DM you. My lashes are very curly and the curl hides them. It makes it hard for me to apply mascara. Any tips? Oh wow. Very curly. Okay, so I'm sorry. Will you repeat that, baby? So my says, my, my lashes are very curly and the curl hides them. It makes it hard to apply mascara. Any tips? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Sadly, May, I don't have any tips for this. Um, I say 
don't worry about the mascara. I say focus on doing a really beautiful liner that's gonna define your eyes in the same way. I have, I have had this over like the last 15 years of doing makeup. I've been on shoots. This actually has happened many times to me. I've been on hair shoots specifically and the models had very short, very tightly curled lashes naturally. And they're beautiful. They look beautiful. They're so petite. They're so beautiful. But the client wants me to put false lashes on them and it's nearly impossible. So what you have to do is put lashes underneath because you can't go over the curl. I mean, you just, you can't get the lash. It's impossible. It's like actually physically impossible. So you put the lashes, you glue them underneath to give that false lash look. But all that to say, go with what you have. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about straightening them and altering them. Just do a really beautiful, strong liner. That's gonna give you so much umph and like, like definition to your lashes without having to go and try to, you know, fix your curly lashes. I think your curly lashes are beautiful. The ones I've seen are just stunning. They're so, they're just, they're perfect. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's kind of hard to understand what we're saying, but I, I hear you with the problem. I wish I had a better tip or advice for you, but unfortunately I really don't. Um, okay, lashes are on, or mascara is on. Well, Stacy says from and Dallas. Instant you're, facial effect. You're an amazing and inspirational. I really. Sorry, I'm trying I, to read all these. I really need help with the right setting powder recommendations for a very oily T zone. Okay, I actually. You have a very oily T zone. I actually did a whole video with my friend Susan Yara on her channel on mixed makeup. And I talked about all my favorite products for oily skin. And I talked, I touched on powders heavily in that video. And I think that it's a really helpful video. Um, maybe I'll try a link in the description of this live once it's um, uploaded. So you can click on it and watch it. It's a really good video. And if you have a really oily T-zone, I think you'd find that video very helpful. Okay, so this is a little little wand for the bottom lashes. So Tristan says, uh, would you be willing to do a short hmm. showing how to sanitize your eyeshadow palette after using it totally. on a client? Maybe I'll, do, maybe I'll do a reel about that, Tristan. Because I don't know how, I don't think it's gonna be a long enough. Uh, That's what she's saying, a short, yeah. Oh, she said a short. Oh, just kidding, yes. Tristan, you already said that. So yes, I will do it. That's a great idea for a short. I will, I'm gonna say I'll, I'll mentally write it down, but I know I'll forget to do that, so. I'll have Mitch write down. Um, I'm not gonna forget about blush, don't worry. I'm gonna use the Tower 28. Beach, please, is the formula, but the shade is Power Hour. I just had a really hard time with that for some reason. This is a cream blush. I think cream blushes for the office are really nice because since we do have a bit of, quite a bit of powder on our skin and our face, it's nice to bring the contrast back in of a cream blush because it's gonna bring that uh, luminosity, like that skin-like quality back to your cheeks and give you like a nice balance. So instead of being matte, 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 and then matte blush, we're gonna bring some balance back and bring some like glow back to the skin. So I'm just gonna use my BK Beauty 106, dip into Power Hour. Why can't I remember this name? Power Hour is just like a nice neutral, great color. I have this color in my kit too, and it's like a staple in my makeup kit. I'm gonna pre-buff it in. Please don't mind the burn on my hand, it's healing. I'm gonna pre-blend into my hand because I want to be nice and natural. And then I'm gonna hit the highest, highest point of my cheeks. Mm, okay. Can you ready for some questions? Gosh, May, that's a really hard question. I'm, I'm always filter, I'm not, I shouldn't say always, but I, I go through every month or so, I go through my kit and I take out things that I don't use, put in new products, shuffle in new releases so my clients you know get to try new things which is always fun for them yeah power hour is a great one right maria will the cream blush last all day you know what it's not going to last all day i'm going to be really real with you but it's going to last a long time because it's 
being put on top of that powder base. It also has primer, it also has setting powder and all those things. So it's got a really good chance of staying put because I'm not just putting it on like a tinted moisturizer base where if you did that, it's gonna slip and slide literally all throughout the day. So now I'm gonna take my eyeshadow brush that just has the setting powder on it and blend out this little edge just to soften that. Okay, I some lashes. It's a little patch. You ready? Oh, it's my skin. Yeah. Uh, Magdalena says, make it for the office, takes into account wearing and reading glasses in the middle of the day, all short times or etc. Can you please recommend any repair trick the second half of the day? Didn't we do a video on uh, touch-up, makeup touch-ups? Yeah, I mean, I think for touch-ups throughout the day, you're gonna want a couple things. First of all, pack a powder puff with you. This is gonna be phenomenal for just on the go, quick touch-ups, right? So like, let's say you're post-lunch, you have oily skin, or you got little creases going on here from like talking and stuff. Take your powder puff and you press out any of those areas. If you get creases under your eyes, make sure you press it under your eye, buff out any creases. And then of course you wanna bring your lip liner, your lipstick, and that's it really. I mean, that's the best you can do. You can also, if you want to take like a small concealer brush and buff out these lines that happen after wearing glasses. Now, these lines are inevitable. It's just, you can't, I don't have some magic trick to make these go away. They just kind of, they are what they are, sadly. So, Take a little brush, you can buff them out throughout the day and take a little bit more setting powder, press it in that area so it doesn't slip so much and it's, your glasses are resting on top of a mattified area, which is gonna be better for them. And that's like the best advice I can give you, to be honest. I need to fix up my brows. Oh boy. Sorry, it's just, oh boy. I'm gonna grab my brow, my elf brow wow. And feather them up a little bit more. Okay, I got some things for you. Okay, Mitch is gonna tell me, or tell me some questions I missed. Read me some questions I missed, sorry. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you please do a makeup series on specific skin tones, like fair skin, medium, Ooh, I like dark that. tones? I mean, I have skin tone, uh, all medium skin tone, and would love to know how makeup specific for my skin tones. Great ideas. Yeah. You know? That's a great idea. I love that idea. I will definitely write that down. Um, that could be a great series, just like. Yeah, that know, could be a really great. Series, uh, great series. Love that idea, actually. I really have to write that down. Uh, Thalia says, I would love to see a travel video on what beauty products and makeup you pick, pack. Any travel tips would be great. Awesome. Hey, I'm actually traveling, you guys, on Wednesday. Mm, you should totally do a short question. So. I have a very busy week before I leave, to be honest, like a very busy week. And I leave really early on Wednesday, so I don't know. I could try to bust something like that out, but I also know me and I can't guarantee it because I don't know if I, that will for sure happen. So. Maybe I could try to do a live, yeah. Okay, you guys, let's go to lip because I have such a beautiful lip. I've been teasing it this whole time. You've already seen me use it. I've used it on a live before. It's the uh, Violette FR is the brand. Um, if you don't know who she is, she's a makeup artist. She, I think she was based in New York and then she moved to Paris and she was Paris based. Now she's back. I think she's in LA now. I can't remember. She's a traveling, like, she's been all over the world. She is an incredible makeup artist, but she's got her own brand now and she's got the Bisu Balm. I know I say that wrong, but this is the most beautiful, like, bright but neutral berry. I, I mean, it's such an insane color, okay? Let me just swatch it to show you. So it's buildable, like you can build up the intensity and you can layer it, but it's such a soft, stunning color. So what I wanna do, what I actually truthfully wanna do, I wanna show you how to just blend it on your lips and then go over it with lip liner. I have not tried that setting powder. Uh, black lipstick? Uh, don't have many thoughts on black lipstick. I wouldn't wear it personally, but you know, whatever your style is. Um, oh, you say, okay, good, thank you. Phew, it's good to know. 
Aya says, best black eyeliner uh, for the waterline that doesn't run or smudge. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I feel like they all run to some degree. Or you gotta repeat. Oh. Okay, hold on. Doing my lips. That's pretty tough. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring below me. This color is just insane. But let me, let me show you what my vision was for this, okay? Hold on. I have never heard my dog snore this loud in my life. So glasses are on. My hair's soaking wet, but you can't tell. But so you see how I mean where it doesn't matter what you put in the crease because you're not gonna see that much anyway. It's really all about what you're gonna see on the bottom. So I have like nicely done bottom lashes. I have eye definition going here. So my eyes aren't being like lost behind my glasses. Like I can still see my eyes. They're still like softly defined. I have that nice curl in my lash, so my lashes are sticking straight up. They're not going straight. They're not gonna end up hitting my, my glasses, depending on like how close I wear them to my eyes. But it's just enough. Like it's just enough to make me look put together. I look polished. I'm not overly done, in my opinion. But my lip is gonna be the focus because my eyes are still soft, but they're still there, which I think is just so important if you wear glasses. Like your eyes are not lost behind them. They're still like, you can definitely see them. They're like just enough defined where they're not over the top under your glasses. And that is what makes this balance because like the lip is still the focus. My eyes aren't lost, but my lip is definitely like the main focus of the makeup look. So I did one <laughs> anyway, which is like, wow, that was a long rant. So I did one coat of the Bisou Balm. And like I said, you can layer it. You can keep it nice and soft and natural, but let me show you how to do a lip liner on top. You just grab one out of here. <laughs> and I actually want to do just a nice neutral. I'm not going to do a... So that's actually one thing I want to talk about too really quick. Just because this is bright doesn't mean you have to pull out your brightest lip liner to match it. You don't have to match your lip liner to your lipstick. You just don't. It's an old school way of going about it. I think lip colors that are bright look so much better and so much more balanced. You know, let's pair it with a drugstore, you know? Let's go, let's go drugstore. Let's go nude truffle from NYX. $4, well spent. That's good one. That's damn it, it's a good one. Mitch loves this lip liner. I feel like you always talk, you always compliment me. But this is a great way to bring balance and like a subtleness, of, a subtle definition to your lips when you're wearing a brighter lip color. You don't need to go crazy. You don't need to do this color exactly as lip liner. I just, it's my least favorite way of wearing a bright lip color. So I'm gonna take my lip liner. So I actually have a very defined Cupid's bow, but the rest of my lip line, it disappears into the rest of my skin. I have no, I have no pigmentation as far as my lip liner, my lip line goes. So for lip liner, this is a must for me. Like I never skip lip liner for this reason because this lip looks fine. It looks office ready, it looks office appropriate but it's missing something. So I like to take my lip liner. And for me personally, I don't like to sharpen my cupid's bow. I look really witchy and I look really, um, I look unfriendly <laughs> for me. Like it, I don't like the way it looks and changes my, my face. I don't like the way it looks on me at all, at all. And uh, so what I like to do instead is round out and fill in my cupid's bow. So like this little pocket, I fill it in. And then I just round it out. And how is it, how is it already an hour in? What happened, you guys? And then bring it down. So, so um, you told me to update you, but your blush tip helped me a lot. Hmm. I started putting, putting in highlighter and not as far in, thank you so much, mm. that's Sam. Sam, I'm so happy my blush tip helped you. That's amazing. And thank you for actually like using it and trying it. trying it out, you know, that's, you never know until you try, right? So see how this lip liner just gives really pretty contrast. My lips are defined. But it's not like taking that matching lip liner where all of a sudden that's going to take this lip way over the top. 
way, way over the top. So this is a way to kind of tone down a brighter lip. So it just kind of neutralizes it, makes it a little more daytime, definitely more office appropriate. So I don't know, I think this is probably one of the best tips to be quite honest. Everyone's asking what classes those are. Those are the Prada ones? They're Prada, they're really expensive. <laughs> I actually have lost these glasses twice and found them in the most bizarre places. I found them at a hotel once. I found them in the back of my car. Oh, Gigi asks, congratulations on getting a million views on your Sephora mm. blushes video. Let's ride. Thank you. I'll take credit for that. I'm just he'll take credit for that. That was his idea, that video. <laughs> thank you. That was Jennifer? Uh, that was JJ. JJ, thank you so much for noticing, first of all. Love that you're like celebrating that because that's like a big win for us, like a huge win. Like we still talk about that. So thank you for that. A lot of, a lot of people are saying that they want a class in New York. You just ask if they'd really be interested in doing that. How many people would actually be interested in a class? You know, I'm still trying to gauge how many people would be truly interested in an in-person class because it's something I, um, I really want to get done, to be honest. I want to actually do a tour, like actually go on a tour and see all kinds of different um, cities and meet you guys in person. I, it's something I like, I'm so passionate about and I would just be so thrilled to do that. So, you know, leave me a, feel free. Like if you want to see something like that and you would, you would actually attend, leave me comments on like any of the videos, like it doesn't matter what video, if you leave me a comment on a video, I'll see it because I get alerts, <laughs> so I'll see it. Um, but I would love to know, love to just gauge your, your interest. Adrian, you know, I'll come to Florida. I promise you my best friend lives out there. So it's, mm. would be a win-win. Okay. I'm just going to fix this line a little bit more. Oh, your bronzer video, Nancy, <laughs> we're working on the bronzer video. Nancy, it's, I know. It's hugs Nancy, I got a funny story about the bronzer video. Actually, it's a sad story before I wrap this up. I filmed, we filmed two days worth of that bronzer video unboxing, trying on. I think I went through, I think I got through like 15 bronzers, trying them out. We looked back at the footage and it was during a time where I lost my voice, which was really, really annoying. Like just not convenient at all. So I had to scrap the footage basically because my voice was just, nobody wanted to listen to that <laughs> for that long. So we had to scrap the, the stuff that we did film. So we lost two days of footage on the bronzer video. So we're gonna be starting from scratch and wish us luck because we, I promise you, we will get it done. There's one thing I forgot before I wrap this video up, and that is setting spray. If you're in the office, set your makeup, especially if you're wearing powder foundation like I did for this video, make sure you set it with a setting spray. So I'm gonna take my Fix Plus Stay Over from MAC, I love this one, and I'm gonna spritz, I had a hair in my hand, the entire face. Hold on. Whew. Make sure you do this when your mascara is fully dry. If your mascara is not fully dry, I would do it in two sections where I cover my eyes, get the bottom half, and then the, get the top half. That's why I do actually on clients when I'm in a hurry. Um, Are you gonna review the new a ABH palette? No, but maybe I'll just buy it. It looks really pretty. Anastasia Beverly Hills. Oh. Okay, so thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. This is the look. This is the going into the office, whatever that looks like for you, it's different for everyone. So again, take this with a grain of salt and take the tips that make sense for you and what your office environment is. I don't know what it is, but this is like what I would suggest if you're kind of starting from scratch, you don't really know what to wear to the office. These are some good rules of thumbs, rules of thumbs. I know it's not technically the right saying. These are a good, Good tips, okay, we'll call them good tips. And um, especially if you're an eyeglass wearer, utilize the tips I talked about and don't overthink it. You know, if you wear glasses, just don't overthink it. Focus on your lips if you want or just don't overthink your eyeshadow because majority of it is going to be covered up anyway. So focus on the bottom, do some good lashes, get, some good, get a good mascara and then that's all you need, trust me. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Leave me a comment on this video once it's uploaded. Let me know if I missed anything or if you had any questions that I also missed and that you really want answered. The best way to get them answered is to just leave that comment and I'll be able to like check throughout the day and answer your questions. So, um, but yeah, and Justin, I'll DM you back, I promise.
But I'm gonna get coffee soon so I can talk <laughs> the rest of the day because I can't talk right now. And then that's about it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday, whatever you're doing, if you're, you know, out and about, I hope you have a wonderful day. And the, oh, Mitch, just, there's a couple of questions that I'm missing. I'm sorry, what, what do you want me to do? No, it's okay, it's fine. I gotta wrap it up. I'm so sorry, I've been here a long time. I, I, I gotta head out and get some stuff done, but I love you all. I hope you have a great, great day and leave me that question. I promise you I'll get back to it. Bye, bye, thank you.